Good morning, church. Come on, let's be quiet. Good morning, church. Man, I'm happy to be here. I'm honestly just filled with joy to be able to speak today. I've been making some investments, and they've been paying off. And as I say that, I know some of you guys are thinking, man, this guy's been doing investments with his money and things like that, but not even close. I've been investing my life. I've been investing my time. I've been investing my faith in God. And he has pulled through all the time. And this last month, I, this last month, I know that you guys have been on the journey with me, and I'm very open about my journey that I have with God. And y'all know my investment that I told God that I would make this 2019 is my time. Is that God told me that there's nothing that you're not investing already, but there's something I want you to invest a little bit more, is your time. And I said, God, I, I invest a lot of time into you. He's like, no, no, you put in that time. You put in the time that you think that's enough, but I need you to invest. And investing, you know, and, and some of you guys in here know when you invest money into something, it, it, it kind of hurts a little bit because you don't know if it's going to pay off or not. It kind of hurts a little bit because you don't know if, if you're going to put in, you know, and, and, and something's actually going to have an outcome to come back and, and bless you or, or double whatever you put in. But I can tell you this is that this month so far, God has proved to me over and over and over again, if I invest my time into him, if I invest my faith and my trust in him, he pulls through. That is the best investment I've made. You know, people that go and jokingly make a bad investment, like scratch-offs or whatever, I've invested in God in every aspect of every portion of my life this past month, and he has paid off every time. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about me trusting in God as far as making an investment in, hey, God, I'm, I, I thank you for my new house that I got. I thank you for the new house that I got. So, God, every contractor, every person that I come in contact with for this house, God, I'm trusting in you that I'll get a good deal and that you'll put the right people in my hands. And God's pulled through every single time so far. And some of you guys are, oh, just because you looked at Yelp reviews. No, that's, that's not true. I've looked up good Yelp reviews before and had a bad experience, you know, and, but I know that God trusts us with things whenever we put our faith in him. If that makes sense for you this morning, I hope that this word's gonna touch you. And I know that a lot of you are coming to, to the church today or a lot of you are coming to the house today and you're trying to figure out, well, what's happening with my year so far? 2019, what's happening with my year so far? I know a lot of you guys in here and I can tell and I can see some of y'all slim jaw lines and slim figures. A lot of y'all are on that diet, which is looking good on you guys, but that wasn't mine for this year. So it, it's gonna catch up in a, in a couple months, just not right now. But that's something that y'all have kept on with. That's something that you kept on strong with. That's something that you said, I'm gonna invest my, my time in going to the gym and invest my, my, my time in going to, or, or money into buying better food for my body. I'm gonna invest, I'm gonna invest, and I'm gonna invest. And it's paying off for some of you guys. See, but the one thing that I want to make sure that you're also investing in, the most important thing that you're investing in is, are you investing into God this year? Are you investing a portion or are you investing all of your life into God this year? Because I'll tell you this, I've invested a good amount of my time and a good amount of my faith and my hope in God saying, God, if, if I'm investing my time, what's the, what's the payout, Lord? Honestly, what's, what's, what's the payout? Because I, I need to know, Lord, I, I need to know what it is. And, and, and God told me, you, you invest your time into me, you invest your faith into me, and, and I'll, show you, I'll show you the good works that I can do. I'll tell you this, the truth, and, and just the truth only, this is it, is that this has been the easiest month or the easiest start for me to reach out to people and talk to them about God. I don't know why. It's my investment. I, I've, I put into God. God, I said, I'll put my faith in you, put my time into you. And he said, every, and, and he told me, like, every time you put your trust in me, I'm going to pull through. I, I kid you not, I, I hear stories after stories after stories about people investing their time into God this year for some odd reason and for some God reason. He's pulling through, which is amazing. Quick shout out to my brother, Tang. Somehow, some way, God gave him an idea to make a YouTube about aquariums because he's good at it. Yet he ties scripture and he ties the gospel in it. And every single day so far, Tang has told me, hey, somebody reached out to me that wants to know about God. Somebody reached out to me and asked me why I tagged my faith inside of this. And, they, and they're caring. Another believer, in, another believer in the kingdom. YouTube videos. That's crazy. For me, every time, every time outside, of, outside of church so far that I've mentioned anything about being a pastor, I've mentioned anything about church, somebody's interested. 
I've actually had people come to me. Like, and, and, you know, I used to have to go to people and talk to them. They have came to me and talked to me. And some people don't even know that I'm a pastor, but they come to me and they're asking me, and I'm like, God, this is awesome. You know, for me, my investment in my time was, I said, God, I want to see 7,000 people in this church. 7,000 people. And I know a lot of you have caught that number, and a lot of you guys understand why I say 7,000. And if you're part of the dream team, I hope you understand that 7,000. Because I didn't give up yet. I'm making my investments. I'm pushing through for my time because I'm not giving up. God has given me just this mentality to just not give up on him this year. And he's showing me every way to not give up. He's showing me that my investments in him are worth it. And, and, and let me tell you something too. First time ever in my life. First time ever. I got a letter in, I like, I got a letter in, in my email yesterday. I got an email and it was a, it was a um, I, I, I forgot what you call it, but it was a letter asking. It said, you know, Pastor Sam, we would like for you to come speak. We want to host a youth conference in Denver, Colorado. Would you come speak for us? We feel that God has put it on our heart that whatever fire you have, we need for our young people to have. They want to fly me out to Denver, Colorado to preach. For the first time ever in my life, somebody's asked me, and I know for sure that God knows that I'm ready, and at the same time, God's showing me, I trust you. I trust you. I'm ready for you to go out and speak. I'm ready for you to go out. Of course, I've gone to Vietnam, but I've gone under the covering of Pastor Khan, and I've gone under the covering of, of with a whole team. And, but when I got the email and I got the text message, no joke, this is what I said to the, the young person that sent me the text. You, you want to talk to me to get to Pastor Khan, right? Is that what you're trying to do? And they're like, no, no, no. My, the, my pastor wants to talk to you. And I was like, do you know that I'm Pastor Sam, right? I'm, the, I'm not Pastor Khan, right? And they just laughed. They're like, we know who you are, you know? And I was like, okay, all right, sounds good to me. And then they called me, and, and, and they sent that, that formal letter to me. And that formal letter, when I read it, and you guys know I, I, probably what I did next, I bawled when I read that letter. Why? Because it was, it, was like, it was like God showing me, this is your payout right here. I trust you. You trust me. I'm taking you to places you never thought you would go. I'm taking you to places you never thought that your life would be. I'm taking you to places where you never thought or never imagined that your ministry would go. Me. Why, why me, God? And then as I kept thinking and as I kept seeing and reading over this letter, God said, stop questioning why and just do it. You ask for blessings, here's your blessing. Walk through it. And I, and I was blessed by that because I'm seeing more and more and more as I put my trust in God this year. He's paying out. He's pulling through. If you want to see 7,000, if you want to see your loved ones and your family members here at this church, put your investment into them. He'll pull through. I can't wait for Pastor Michael, actually, to talk, to talk about, you know, the finances in a couple of, in a couple of weeks. It's because... I know that I'm ready to make an investment so that we can have things here at our church. I'm ready to make an investment with my finances so that I can see things happen here at the church. I'm ready. Honestly, I, I want this stage to be rounded out. I, I want it to look nice. I want it to be rounded out. I want this red carpet to be black on top. I want a big LED wall on the back so that we can have the words on the back instead of up here. I want to be where other churches are in, in technology. I, I want to have an electric guitarist, Jacob. I want to have other drummers playing, Anthony. I want to have other keyboarders play, Brittany. That was awesome today. I want to have that. That's more of an investment. See, you guys have trusted God, and you said, God, you know what? This year, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to step up. I'm going to do something about it. And Brittany, of course, you got put on the hot seat, but man, you did a good job today. And that's all through God. And I'll tell you this, and y'all know my story about the drums too. Y'all know my story. As long as you put that investment in God, he'll pull through for you. I didn't take that many lessons on the drums. I was terrible. Played the same beat for every song for the first year of my life. But look at me now. That was, my investment. that was my investment in God. I'll give you my time at a young age. I'll give you my time. I'll, I'll give you my talents, the little that I have. And God pulled through. Why? Why does God pull through? Why is it worth the investment into him? Because he loves us. And that's where I'm getting with, with our message today, is that the title of our series is He Did That. So what did he do? Where are we going to go in Scripture? What did he do? And, and I want you guys to follow me in the journey as we read, read through the Scriptures to see, for instance, why did Jesus 
wash the feet of his disciples. What was the reason? Why did he do that? Some people say, oh, that's what, that's what they did back then. That, 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 that was a sh- sign of respect. Yeah, but Jesus did it. Why did he have to? Why? He, he's the Messiah. Why? He's, he's the king. He's, the disciples looked up to him as a leader. Have you ever washed your boss's feet before? You ever gone to work, you know, and just be like, you know what? Hey, boss, I'm going to take off your shoes really quick. Let me wash your feet really quick. No. It's, it's unheard of. It's unheard of to where where you're doing something for your boss. It's, un, it's unheard of. There's that relationship and that gap that you don't really do stuff like that. Right now, instead of thinking about the washing of feet, and we're saying, man, if you're at your company, or you're at your job, and you say, man, I, I want God to show up here. I want God to show up in my company. I want God to make a difference here at my company. Well, why don't you start showing your boss what Christ is like? Why don't you start showing your coworkers what Christ is like through your life being an example, through your life being who Christ is, God's love. And if you can express and if you can show love to people, they can easily see Christ. I'll tell you this, when I meet people and when I talk to people, it's not that I'm sharing to them about the gospel all the time. It's not that I'm spitting knowledge to them. It's not that I'm, I'm the wisdom. No, it's not even that. Most of it is just love. Most of it's friendship. Most of it's love. It's, it's companionship. Most of it is just being there for somebody. And that's what Jesus is, is if you need somebody in your life. He's not there to just tell you things over and over and just talk to you. No, no. He's there to be there for you. That is the best aspect I believe that Jesus is in my life, is he's there for me. There are times in the days where we sit and we're alone and we're by ourselves. And, 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 and we're at home alone, and we're at home, or we're in our office by ourselves, and we're at work by ourselves, and we wonder, God, why are we here? What's going on? But yet, at the same time, when I ask those questions to God, he reminds me, I'm still here with you. There's a reason for you to be here. There's a reason for you to be here. If you can believe that the place that you're at this year, if you can believe at the place where you're at working currently, if you can believe that there's a reason why you're there, and God wants to do something for that reason, and you trust in him, and you make that investment, man, he'll pull through. Let's go ahead and get started with our message, yeah? So today I want us to look at John 13, 1 through 17, okay? So we're, gonna, we're just going to read through the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And let me go ahead and just lock my iPad because it wants to move around really quick. All right, cool. So as a I read, you guys can follow along on the screen, okay? So before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You know, it wasn't a question of, did you forget about me? It was a question of, why are you doing that? Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And, and, and you have to imagine, and you have to put yourself in that setting and in that place of disciples being in a room with Jesus, and he's the Messiah, and he's the king, and he's the leader. You know, they see him as Jesus Christ. They see him as their heavenly father. They see him as that. They put him on a level of authority, and, 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 and he's up there. Yet, why, why are you doing this? Jesus, Jesus, no, no, we should be the ones washing your feet. And and that's how he's feeling. And so he said, Lord, are you going to wash, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. Out of this whole entire verse, that's my favorite line right there. Just remember that line, verse 7, Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. And, and, and let me just fill you in just a little bit. You know, Jesus knows that there's two people that are going to betray him and deny him. Yet he still washes their feet. Yet he still shows love to people who are going to backstab him, hurt him, do him wrong. 
yet he still washes their feet with love and with compassion. You don't understand now what I'm, going, what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested. You will never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. And Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you, and you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because that's what I am. And since I am your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I've given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. So when I put myself in that place and in that setting of what was happening, it would, it would, be, it would be as if for us in the leadership team, if Pastor Khan was to say, hey guys, I'm, I, I want to do something. I want to wash y'all's feet today. And see, when you think about the washing of feet, and you think about back then, they didn't have closed-toe shoes. They had Jesus sandals, open-toed, strap sandals, whatever it was. That was the style back then. So you can imagine the dirt and the nasty toes and all those kind of things. And, ugh, feet are just not my thing. It's, ugh, it's just, ugh, you know? And it's just, that was the thing that they had a servant to do. In the house, before they entered into a house, I think, honestly, these people in the Bible, they might have still been Asian because we take our shoes off before we get into the house. And they did the same, but they washed their feet. And so I understand what it, I understand the scripture a little bit more. And, and on the side of at the house, we just got new flooring. And for some reason, we just can't get the dirt off the floor. So every time you walk around with feet, you're like, oh, man, this is like, and you sweep and you sweep. And you, I mean, and Jeannie sweeps and Jeannie sweeps and Jeannie sweeps. Like, I haven't swept yet, but, you know, it just, it's all of your feet. And so, you know, you've got to go to the tub and, and wash it off. And you're just like, oh, now I feel good. But you think about that was somebody's job back then to wash people's feet before they get into the house, before they get there, because their feet were unclean. Now, when you think about the spiritual aspect that our feet takes us to places and that our feet takes us to where God has sent us or where we want to take our journey. So on the spiritual side of it, what I see is that when God was washing their feet, he says, wherever y'all have been, wherever y'all are, you're here now with me and I'm washing your feet, you're clean. I'm forgiving you right now. That's what I see it as. And as Jesus gets down and kneels down and he washes their feet, you think about it in their heads. They're probably like, man, this is weird. This is strange. Like, why, 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 is, why is it that the person that I'm looking up to is washing my feet right now? Why is he doing this? And then as the disciples are sitting there, you know that what's in their head is that they either see it as an action of love or they're nervous inside of them because they know something's, something's not right. Why, why do I not feel comfortable with this? I mean, why? This is weird. And, and and it's just like how we live our life now. Some of us can come and ask God to forgive us for our sins, and we're okay with it. But some of us, when we have sin in our life, we feel like, oh, I, I, I can't do this. This is weird. I'm sorry. I, I don't feel worthy of you washing our feet. Yet Jesus Christ came down, and he was coming down to be a blessing for us, and that's why he washed our feet. And that's why he's washing the disciples' feet, because he's showing an act of love right here. He's putting himself where there's no level of authority, there's no, there's no status, there's nothing like that. He's coming down, and he says, I'm going to take care of you guys. And he washes their feet. And as he's washing their feet, it's not like he's, it's, and he doesn't show favoritism. You know, it's not like he gets to one of the disciples and says, man, I, I love you more. I'm going to wash your feet longer or anything like that. Or he's not like condemning them as they wash their feet. Like, oh, you have toes or whatever. You know, he's not saying stuff like that. He's just thinking of love and he's thinking good thoughts of them. And he's making sure that they're clean before they enter into the house, before they have their meal. He's thinking about them and he's washing their feet. And, and you know, when I have guests over at the house or when Jeannie has guests, when we have guests over at the house, you know, what I've learned from my mom growing up when we have guests over, at my old, when I was at my mom and dad's house, 
No matter how many guests we had, my mom was never sitting with us because she's always like, hey, would you like this? Hey, would you like this? Hey, would you like water? Hey, would you like this? Would you like some tea? And no matter, even if you just ate, hey, would you like some more food? And even if you just ate that food, would you like some dessert? And even if you ate that dessert, I have something else. I might have some ice cream. But that was like that, that, was like that servant heart that you want to make sure whoever into, enters into the house, they're treated well. And Jesus was, Jesus was showing them that this, I'm treating you guys well. I care for you. This is my act of love. I care for you. I care for you. And so as you see that Jesus is doing this, and, and as you see, my, like I said, my favorite verse, while, he's, while, he, while he is washing Simon Peter, he, he says to him, Lord, why are you washing my feet? And Jesus replies, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. See, sometimes we don't understand what's happening in our life. Sometimes we don't understand what, what just, why are these things happening in our life. Sometimes we don't understand why is there a tear down in our life and why is there this and why is there that. And we don't understand. You know, like, why did I have to lose my job and all these things? You know, and, and, and I want to take this time to, to share a testimony that one of, one of, my, one of my brothers here, and I haven't, seen, I haven't seen him in a while, and he came back, and he had nothing but testimonies to share. I was like, man, what happened when you were gone, you know? And so I had the privilege yesterday with Pastor Khan to do my first house dedication at somebody's house. That was my privilege, and I was like, wow. I was like, God, again, you trusted me. And God was showing his love to me, right? And so, so I want to share a little bit about this person's testimony, and I know they don't care because they were like, I'll come on stage and share it. And I was like, okay. But I didn't get a chance to ask, so I'm going to share it. So, so I've, I, I've got a buddy, and, and, and this person's here sitting at the church. And, you know, when I first met him and he came to church, he, was, he wasn't new to it, but he was, he's been away from it. And everything was going good. Everything was going great. And we used to play basketball and everything. And then one Friday night, he got in a car accident. And because he got in that car accident, it was because he was dropping off a, 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 one of the students that came. He wasn't even heading that direction. He didn't even have to. He would have avoided that car accident if he didn't drop that person off, but he was obeying God, and he felt bad for this young boy because he was like, man, if I was in that position, I would want somebody to take me home. And so he takes the boy home, and then he gets in a car accident, and after that car accident, it messes him up. It messes up his back, messes up his knee. He goes to rehab. It doesn't get better. And then all of a sudden, he comes to church, and, and it's kind of not the same. And then fr from that aspect of that happening, on top of that was stuff that was happening in his marriage. And then on top of that stuff happening on his marriage, stuff was happening at his job. And then he lost his job, and then something happened back home in California, and he had to go all the way back to California to fix something, and all this stuff was piling up and piling up. And, and you would think, God, give me a break, right? That's exactly how he felt. God, give me a break. I, 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 what's going on? And, and, and on top of that, here comes the next year, Hurricane Harvey comes, and he loses things. And on top of that, he's like, well, there goes everything, right? And then on top of that, mom, his, his, his mother-in-law has to go to the hospital, go through chemo and all these things, and he has to take care of the family, and it's difficult, and he's the father of the house, so he's got kids, and he's got the mother-in-law in the house, and he's got his wife that he has to take care of. It's a lot of pressure, and you're thinking to yourself, God, do you really love me because all this stuff is happening? How can you really care about me? How can you be a good God if all this stuff is happening? I don't know, and, I, and, I, and I'm telling you, I, 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 am, I felt it for him, can you imagine all that stuff piling up? Give me a break, God. And, and that's kind of like how he was feeling. Give me a break, God. And, and then he hit rock bottom. And he told me, I, I wanted to bounce back if I didn't hit rock bottom. And he said to me, when I hit rock bottom, I had to tell God, I give up, God. You do something. And he, he, I bet he didn't regret those words he said. He said, you do something, God. God's, and I bet God said, okay. I'll do something. He says, God, you do something. God says, I'll do something. And then all of a sudden, his finances get better. And then all of a sudden, his health is better. And all of a sudden, his marriage is better. And all of a sudden, he went back to school for some other reason, got a job, lost that job, got a better job right away, instantly. And then on top of that, the health of the kids is even better. And then on top of that, to even get to the best part about it, they own their first home ever now. And that's a big deal because his wife has never been in a house that was her own. Yeah, you tell me that God's not real. Oh, it's coincidence. No, it's not because that person can tell you a testimony. I worked hard and yet it still didn't work out. 
I put in the work, yet it still didn't work out, but the blessing came from God. Why, 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 am, I sh- why am I sharing this message? It's because the love of God comes through action sometimes. See, God was washing the feet. That was his way of showing love. Sometimes in our life, God shows his love through actions. When we ask God, where are you at? God, I've been praying for you. You haven't answered prayers. You haven't, I've been praying. Where are you at? And God was like, you don't see the things that I've been doing for you? Oh, you, you think it's because hard work or, or coincidence. Let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this. Coincidence or not, he, he, this, this friend of mine loses his job. He's number 25 in the list to get another job. He speaks to that person. They go, hey, I'll put you first. Let's go. Let's do it right now. Gets a job right away. How? Oh, that person just had compassion on their heart. Okay, that's what you can say. But that person was believing that God was going to pull through and God pulled through. See, the thing that we have to get out of our mind is that we think that a lot of things are coincidences. And we think that a lot of things are based off of the hard work that we put in. Sure they are. Sure, you could put in hard work. Sure, you put it. It's, it, sometimes it could be a coincidence, but for me, I don't believe that because if I invest my time in God, whatever pulls through for me, I know it's from God. Why? Because God's always given me the best. See, the thing is, with coincidence and, and, and me putting in hard work, it's like I skimped by, I barely got by, but when it's from God, it's like a definitely a blessing, and I can't doubt it. When I walked into that brother's house, and, and, and he told me everything about the house, and he told me everything, I, I looked around, and I was in shock. I was like, Man, God pulled through. This is awesome. And, and to see the best thing of all, he told me, man, it was crazy. I used to tell my kids, it was, it's 8 o'clock. You can't jump. We used to own an apartment. We can't jump, kids. There's people downstairs. You got to be quiet. And to see his son just lay on his stomach and just slide down the stairs that they have at their two-story home now, he was just like, yeah, and he was laughing. It was like 9 o'clock. It was awesome. And to see his son just run around and just scream and, they looked at each other, well, can't say anything because it's our house now, you know? And it was a blessing to see that, that God pulled through. God pulled us through through actions. Look out for them. See, today, when we're breaking down this message, what we're going to talk about is what happened when Jesus washed their feet. How did he show the love? How did he show his love? Because all that that happened through that brother's life, guess what? He did that. God did that. See, the title of our series is he did that, and I guarantee you with that testimony, I can stamp that and say God did that right there. Boom. Today, I have another testimony to share with you that I'll get to, and I know for a fact that God did that. So when we move on to the next point of after we talk about how God has proved through actions, what we're going to go to is now that Jesus shows love through forgiveness. Forgiveness. One of the hardest things I can probably say is loving somebody and having to forgive them. As human as we are, it's hard. People backstab you. People say things about you. Forgiveness isn't always the easiest. Right? So sometimes some of our forgiveness looks like, yeah, 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 I forgive them. And then you kick it on the rug and you don't ever want to talk about it again. That's the kind of forgiveness sometimes that we have, but that's not what God did. That's not what Jesus did in this, this, this story right here. He knew that two of his disciples were going to hurt him. He knew that two of the people that he cared about, that he spent time with, his family, was going to hurt him. He already knew it. But yet he sits them down and he still washes their feet. And he does it with love. He doesn't scrub harder. He doesn't try to, you know, do anything worse. He shows them love still. That act of love right there changes everything for those guys. Why? Because I bet you in their mind, when, whenever they think or whenever they hurt Jesus at that moment, all they're reminded by is that he was kneeling down at their feet, washing it. And that is a thought that I, it rings in my mind as I think about forgiveness, is that if Jesus can do that, so can we. If people can hurt us, we can forgive them. It's not easy. It's not. But with Christ on our side, if Christ lives inside of us, if we've chosen to let Christ live inside of us, we can do that. And we've got, let's go, let's be honest. We've got family members that it's hard to forgive sometimes. But you can't be the one praying for your family to come to church if you don't even forgive them. Let's get real real quick. You want to bring a a cousin or you want to bring a a sibling to church or you want to bring, you know, in-laws or whatever it is and you're praying for them to come to church. Lord, bring them to church. Yet you're the one that's stopping them because you have bitterness in your heart. Man, that's a little quiet. 
Oh, you've been praying for your family to come to church for ages, and you've been praying for all these kind of things, yet at home, you're not showing love at all. You're not showing Christ at all. So in their mind, they're thinking, what's the point of even coming to church if you're acting like this? I see no life change. But yet in the Bible, through and through, Jesus Christ showed himself the same every single day. He loved every single day. He was loving people, forgiving people every single day. He was loving every single day. Let me tell you something. If y'all want the church to grow in here, I bet the easiest way to start is with family. So this is my challenge with you. If you know in your heart that you have bitterness in your heart towards a family member, resentment, or something happened between cousins, or something happened between siblings, fix it. I'll tell you this. When you can fix those things of unforgiveness, God can show and God can pull through. God can show and God can pull through. How do I know that that's true? How do I know that that's true? got another buddy that, that, that's here at the church, and his testimony, man, his testimony was <clears throat> probably one of the biggest testimonies that I've got to witness myself. Sorry. And so, it was 20, it's 2018, <clears throat> October 2018, Revival Conference here. And I remember this, this gentleman, you know, he's got the servant heart. He's never been to conference before. And he was open, his eyes opened up to what happened here at the conference. And, you know, one of the messages that I spoke, I said, you know, God wants to make a difference in your family's lives. And, and, and y'all have heard the testimony. If you haven't heard, it's on our YouTube or our Facebook, and it, and it was through Edgar. Edgar's one of my boys, and, and he always, he reminded, he's told me, he's like, man, my relationship with my brother, like, that's what I'm praying for. You know, and, and I'll fill you all in a little bit so that if you watch the testimony, if you don't, you know the story at least. Him and his brother had such a fallout that they haven't spoken in four years. They live in the same city. Four years. Then he comes to conference, and then I, I have a message, and the word from God was to pray for family members, and he sees his, he sees, it's not his family, but he sees his girlfriend at the time come up and, and pray with her siblings, and, and on his heart, he's like, no, nah, that's, that's their family. I, I need to stay back here and pray for my family. And so he stays back there, and, 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 and I know in his testimony, he says that he's praying for his siblings, and in particular, he's praying for his brother. And Edgar's praying for his brother, and, and, and there's hurt, there's pain, unforgiveness. You know, and, and what he says was that how his, him and his brother left their relationship was on bad terms. They were saying things like, uh, I, I'll let Edgar be the judge of what I said was right or wrong, but I remember him saying something along the lines of, like, I don't even want to go to your funeral if you died. You know, it was like that intent, that, or that intense. It was, it was those kind of words that were said before they had that split of four years. But then Edgar received a word here at the church, or he received something here at the church saying that he wanted to receive, Edgar himself wanted to receive God's forgiveness, yet he felt like, I can't receive God's forgiveness fully until I forgive my brother. So they haven't spoken in four years. So why would all of a sudden something change, right? But he's praying about it. He said, God, I... I want my brother's life to change. Day after conference, his sister calls him and goes, Edgar, I, I need you to talk to your brother. Like, it's getting worse. Like, it, it's not, nothing's getting better. Like, he's making bad decisions. And, 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 and I need help. Like, I need something to happen. He's making bad decisions. And Edgar's at, Edgar's at work, if I'm not mistaken, and he says, when he reads that text message, he, he cries. And, and, and he, he responds back to the text message, like so, something along the lines of like, not anymore, or something like that. And then he texts her, calls his brother, hey, let's meet up, and he goes to the house. Four years he hasn't spoken to him, right? Four years, you, you, would you have the guts to go speak to one of your siblings that you had a fallout? Four years to just go into the house and be like, hey, what's up? Four years. The last things they said to each other were like, I'm not coming to your funeral if you die. That much hate, that much bitterness. But Edgar, inside of his heart, knows that God has already forgiven him and that forgiveness that Edgar has in his life, he can give out to other people because that's from God. He knows. He's walking with purpose in every step. 
So as Edgar's walk into the house, as Edgar's going to the house and he walks into the house, he looks at his brother and says, hey man, let's go out to eat. And his brother goes, yeah, let's do it. Let's go out to eat. And they sit down and they talk. And he's, Edgar said, it's like we didn't even lose time. We just talked. And I told him, hey, I forgive you. I'm sorry. And, and they apologize to each other. And, and, and we're continuing to pray for Edgar's brother because I want to see him here. And Edgar wants to see him here. See, that was just the plant of the seed, but that's all that Jesus needs. You just have to believe. That's all that Jesus needs. Because once that forgiveness happens, and once you open up the door for Jesus to do something, that's all that Jesus needs. And so as Edgar is talking to his brother, now they're at least on a cordial place where they can at least talk to each other. Or if things are going wrong, at least they can go talk to each other. It's not four years of gap. It was just maybe a couple days, maybe a couple weeks. And that's a blessing that I see is that God can take something that was broken up for four years and the next day change it. But some of you guys may say, oh, it's, it's still a coincidence. It just happened to be. No, it's not because Edgar prayed and God showed up. Edgar prayed for his brother and the next day something happened. You tell me that's a coincidence, I tell you God, God pulled through. See, the thing is this, is that when Jesus was washing their feet, he forgave every single person, or he forgave the two that were going to hurt him while he's washing their feet. And that's how he showed an act of love right there. And that's how he showed his love right there is through forgiveness. So church, another challenge. Forgive. If you're asking yourself, man, why is my relationship with God not going so well? I'm doing everything. I, I, I thought I was doing everything great. You got somebody you got to forgive? Here's the thing. People hated Jesus, but he never hated anybody. People, hate, people hated him. People spat on him. People said mean things about him. People s stabbed him, slapped him, whipped him, put him on a cross. Yet he still loved them. And all of that love that is inside of him now lives inside of us. And we ask ourselves, how can we make a difference in this city? How can we make a difference through Social media, how can we make a difference through YouTube? How can we make a difference at our workplace? If, if you are a boss or if you are an employee, how can you make a difference? And this is what I say is what I, we learn from the word. How you make a difference in people's lives is if you show Jesus' love to people. That's all that it is. Some of you are like, man, I don't even know what to say, Pastor Sam. Like, honestly, I don't even know what scriptures to quote right away. I don't even know what to, to say right away. I, 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 don't, I don't even know. He didn't, Jesus didn't quote scripture at that time. He was washing people's feet. Yet he changed all their lives right there. It was an act of love. It was an act of love. I know a lot of you guys are sitting here, I don't, I don't feel cold, Pastor Sam. There's, there's no way. I, 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 I'm not like you. I can't speak. I can't, I'm not like you. That's perfect. Because I'm not like you either. I'm not. Miss Diana, I am not like you at all. But you're sitting in front of two people that work in the medical field that can start a ministry just like you that want to go and help people in the hospital and show them light. You're sitting right behind two medical people right now. Actually, in your row, there's four medical people. There's other people that are good at things that you don't think that you're good at. If you link up with people, you can make a difference. I'm telling you, you can make a difference. If you link up together, you can see the 7,000 if you believe. See, the thing is this. There's a fire burning inside of us to want to make a difference in our world for, for God. There's, there's a fire burning inside of us because if there wasn't, you wouldn't have been in this building. There's something that you want to do. There's some difference. There's some change that you want to have in your life. There's something that you want to do, yet you feel like you're not qualified or called to do it. Yet at the same time, God's telling you right now, I love you and you're qualified. With this word that he gave, with, with, with this action of love that he's shown, he did that. What he did was he showed that no matter who you are, no matter if you feel as if you hurt him, no matter if you feel as if you made him sad or whatever it is, or if you turned your back on him, yet at the same time he says, I'll still wash your feet and I'll still love you the same. Nothing has changed and I still care for you. That's what he did. That's what he's doing. See, we have Valentine's Day coming up. As a church, I want us to change what Valentine's Day is. People show love, and affection to one another, great, do that. But on top of that, show someone love like God wants to show them. Show someone love like how Jesus showed his disciples love. Go out there and make a difference. One person, you make a difference for one person, that's a ripple effect that can change, that can change, that can change. 
I'm telling you, it'll make a difference. How do, I, how do I know that something like this makes a difference? How do I know that an act of love or, or just an action makes a difference? How do I know? It's because this is that on KSBJ, there's a 30-day challenge, right? On KSBJ, there's a 30-day challenge to listen to KSBJ only. The first testimony that I share with you, this, this is his wife's testimony. He was trying to get her to go to church over and over. She kept saying, no, I'm not, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go to church. And she did the KSBJ 30 to challenge. And then all of a sudden, one day she woke up and said, hey, we're going to church. And he goes, are you serious? Like, are you for real this time? Because, like, I've gotten up many times to say we're going to church. And she's like, no, I'm serious. Let's go. Let's go to church. And she woke up all the kids. Hey, get up. We're going to church. We're going to VBC. Get up. Get up. Come on. Let's go. And they haven't been for a while. But she said that there was something inside of her that when she listened to KSBJ that she Something stirred up inside of her. And I don't know if she knows, but the Holy Spirit stirred up inside of her that love that she missed being in the church. She got it that day that she came. How do I know? How do I know that's true? Because it came out of her mouth, that's, and she said, I don't know what, what it was. I don't know what it was, but I came to church again, and now I love it, and I'm here, and we can't see without going to church. And they called, and they called me and said, Please, before we even get into our house, we know this is from God. we got to dedicate this house first. We have to. They weren't even moved in really yet. They, they, they had their moving truck still in front of their house, and they said, no, we got to have the pastors come. we got to bless the house first because this is not really our house. This is God's house. He gave this to us. This is how it is. When you understand that that's how much love God has for you, and you put him first, God will invest more and more into your life. God will invest more and more into your life. How do I know that that's true? Is because I've been in the place where you guys have been questioning, should I invest more time into God? Should I invest more time into church? Should I, should I, should I, should I, should I, should I? And I'm telling you, and I'm standing here saying that I'm a nobody, yet when I invested my time into God, he's put me on a platform. See, when you're sitting at work and you think, how am I going to make a difference? I, I'm just a front desk person. How am I going to make a difference? I'm just a student. In, in, a, in a class of however many thousand. I'm just one college student at U of H. How am I going to make a difference? Jesus was one man, and he made a difference. And he lives inside of you, and that power that he has lives inside of you to love on people lives inside of you. You can make a difference. This year, 2019, you can make a difference with having Jesus in your life. With having Jesus in your life, if you think that you're insignificant, don't think that anymore. God has called you to be somebody. God has called you and made you into somebody. You've got talents, you've got skills that other people don't have, and God wants you to use it for his kingdom. And he will show you that it'll pay off if you use your talents for his kingdom. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. How, how do I know that? I'm sitting here as a testimony, knowing, telling you the truth, that if you just live your life exactly how God wants you to live it, your blessings will come. You just be a light at work. I'm telling you, there's so many times that Jeannie comes home and she's like, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. Like, I wanted to tell people about God and I know that, that I needed to tell somebody about God, but I didn't know what to do. So you know what I did? I just thought, man, what, what would Pastor Sam do? What would my, what would my husband do? What would I? And, and, and you know, I just had the courage and, and I just said something and I did it. You know, and then, and then she's just living her life of who she is. She's just being who she is. Yet some people are starting to question, Jeannie, why are you the way that you are? How come you're the way that you are? And I'll tell you this, the only reason, and Jeannie will tell you this, the only reason why she got into medical school, out of medical school, and now is a pediatrician, and now she works for a, 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 a really good company, and the only reason why is because she knows that she was called to do that. God has shown her so much love, so much grace, so much forgiveness or whatever it is that to the point where she knows and she understands that she has a calling to be where she needs to be. And that same love, that same understanding is inside of you guys. And you can receive it too. You don't have to be alone in this journey. You don't have to. Church, I, I, wanna, I wanna tell you what the last point is. And that last point is that Jesus shows love unconditionally. This is the best part about the whole entire story is that he shows love unconditionally and, and it doesn't matter what they did to him. It doesn't matter what they said to him. It doesn't matter what they're going to do or what they, what they plan to do. He showed all of them love the same. 
He let all of them receive love the same. And I know that a lot of us in the room, we feel not qualified. We feel like we're not worthy of God's love. We feel like, man, I haven't spent time with him. Why should he even talk to me? I don't even know who he is. Why should he talk to me? I haven't even spent a single time of my life with him. Why does, it's because he loves you. A lot of people think that God put us on, on, on this world first to just serve him and do all things, but it's because he loved us. He wanted to show us how beautiful this world is that he created, and he wanted us to be a part of it. He loved us that much. And now we get to worship him for doing the things that he has done in our lives and in this world. But for you guys in here, if you feel like you're not qualified for that love, I'll tell you that's a lie from the enemy. You are more than qualified to receive his love. It's free. It's free. And some of you guys think, oh man, what, what, what's it going to be like if I, if I invite Jesus into my life again? What's it going to be like if I rededicate my life? Because I keep going through these things and I keep failing. I keep going through these things and I keep failing. And I'll tell you this, this is the strongest word that God's ever given me is that we don't have two natures in Christ. You don't have to live a life of sin. You don't have to be live a life bound by the chains of the enemy. You don't have to live a life bound by the temptations that you are dealing with. You're like, but I'm human, yeah, but if you have the power of Christ inside of your life, you can say no. You've got that authority. You can say no to those things that are tempting your life. You can say no. Is it, is, it, is it hard? Yeah, it is. But is it easy with the power of Christ? Yes. You've got to get to a place, guys, where we understand that when we read the Bible or when we talk about how good God is, we stamp it with not a question, he did that? But no, my God did that. When we can declare and we can say out of our mouth, yes, my God did that. And when somebody asks you, why do you believe in God? Why is, why is God so important in your life? And for me, I always respond to people because there were needs in my life that worldly things couldn't fix. There were needs in my life that worldly things couldn't fix. There was holes in my life that the world couldn't fix and I tried. I was empty, I tried. I mean, what do you mean you had the good life? You didn't go through bad times or anything. No, I had internal struggles. I felt alone at times. I felt like I wasn't worthy of his love. I felt like I wasn't called to be who he wanted me to be because I didn't feel like I was worth it. Yet he showed me love over and over and forgiveness over and over. And I don't have to have that weight or burden of taking on shame or guilt because he forgives me and I can live a new life. I don't have to live under that shame or guilt. That's the God that we serve. My God, he did that. He died on the cross so that you don't have to have that shame or that guilt. He cared for us so much that he got on that cross, died on that cross for us. He did that. The God that I serve, the God that I love, he changed my brother's life. He has a house now. He did that. For my brother, Edgar, Four years of not talking to his brother. Four years. Yet God the next day did something. My God did that. And what my God did was he saved a young Asian man on a boat out in the sea. Everyone on the boat was dying, thirsting for water. Yet that man was able to get on his knees and say, God, I will give you my life if something changes right now. If you change the situation, help me live, I'll give you my life. And it started to rain. My God did that. My God did that. See, what we got to start doing is remembering the things that God's done in our life and start declaring it. My God did that. Why do you think that some of us forget about the goodness of God? It's because we forget about the things that God's done in your life. Remind yourself, my God did that. My God pulled me out of that. He did that. He did that. He did that. He did that. And the whole point of the message, the whole point of the series that we have is to prove to the world and prove to the world that when they have questions about your God and they have questions about the things that they read in the Bible, what you can do is you can declare, yeah, my God did that. My God did that. See, I, I wish that 
when, when, people, when people come to me and they say, well, why should I give your God a try? And they have all these questions that come with them. Is your God real? And they have all these kind of things. I say, you know what? I'm not even going to battle. I'm not even going to try to argue with you. Why don't you just try it? What does it hurt for you to try? Right? What does it hurt for you to try? I remember saying that to, to one of my friends in high school. What does it hurt for you to try? Why not? And he goes, man, I, I haven't done church in a long time. I'm not telling you to do church. I'm not telling you to do religion. I'm telling you just have a relationship with God. Try it. Man, you're putting me on the spot. No, you put me on the spot, remember? And he's like, okay. And you go to try. Guys, the love that we show, you don't have to argue about it. Just show love. God knew that he was going to get backstabbed. Jesus knew he was going to get backstabbed. He knew that somebody was going to deny him. After all the goodness that he showed, he knew somebody was still going to do it, yet he still loved them, washed their feet, showed them unconditional love, showed them an action of love, showed them all these things of love. And God does the same for us on the daily. You ask him, God, show me your love more and more every day. Show me that you care for me more and more every day. And I guarantee you he'll show you. I guarantee you he'll show you. Why don't we rise to our feet? Just, why don't you just take a moment? Just take a moment. Just, just reflect on your life. Reflect on everything that he's done. And when you come across something that you remember that God did, you say, he did that. You think about the goodness that he has. Your finances, he did that. Your business, he did that. Your health, he did that. Your house, he did that. Your family, he did that. Your baby's health, he did that. Your baby to come, he did that. The world you live in, he did that. Saving your mom, saving your dad, he did that. Think about those things. Be reminded. Be reminded. Think about it. He did that. And so with that last point that I share with you guys, about his unconditional love. It is freely to receive for all of us today. And I want all of us just in this room just to repeat after what I say. God, I know I'm not perfect, but I need your love. I thank you because I acknowledge that I'm, I need your love. And thank you for doing what you've done in my life. And God, right now, I ask that you forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my wrongdoings. And Lord, I ask right now that you enter into my life. That you enter into my life and, and help me make a difference. Lord, we thank you so much. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for your second chance. Just receive it, guys. Receive the forgiveness. Receive the love. Receive the life change. It's yours. He gave it to you. If you're not happy with your life, if you're not happy with where you are, he changes everything. He changes everything. God, I thank you for the second chance that you have given all of us in this room. I thank you for your love that you've given us all in this room. Lord, we are nowhere or we can be nowhere or nothing without you. So God, we ask more of you and less of us. Let us not be selfish, Lord, but let us put you forward and put you in front of our lives more and more. And Lord, as we want to make a difference in our city, let it start with us first. Let us show love like you have shown. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this message that you've given us to show love because you have shown love to us. Lord, that you did that. You showed love unconditionally. You showed love through an action. You showed love and, and, and you, didn't, you didn't do it based off of having to do it, but you did it because you wanted to do it. And we thank you for that love. And Lord, we thank you for just your goodness, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Guys, thank you for joining us here this Sunday at VBC Houston. Please join us in the foyer for some donuts and refreshments. We will see you guys next week.